You're welcome back. Uh, we woke up to the news that the CBN has lifted Forex ban on 43 items and that they are to intervene on, or in the FX market. So we're asking some questions uh, as people who may not understand it, but we're glad that we have this morning joining us on the show, Mukhtar Mohammed, uh, International Finance and Economics Analyst. Uh, he's talking to us here from here in Lagos State. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mukhtar. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Okay. Um, help us make sense to it. Uh, lifting ban on a uh, forest ban on 43 items. What does it really mean? Does it really, is it that the ban on importation of these things have been lifted or what's the difference? Let, help us understand it more. Okay. We must go for the genesis of uh, the 43 items. I mean, they were banned in 2015 by, uh, by the administration of uh, I think it was Mohamed Buhari or at the end, good luck in Billy Jonathan, I can't really remember. But that ban was for all up till uh, this moment that it was lifted. And the ban was in terms of having access to for FX through the official window. They were to source for FX in other, or uh, maybe other sources like by the parallel market. They were not given FX in the official window. That was just the difference. But they were allowed to import these, these goods into the country. So importation of the goods is still there, but you, they, they, they were not allowed to have access to effects in the official window. That was the difference. So it was never banned, but they were banned from accessing effects, effects from the official window. That was just it. So this will make uh, this, the importation of these items very easy for the people who import it? Well, depending on which side you are, when you, you are the importer, how easy could it be? Um, look, where, why were they banned initially? Number one, they were saying that there were terms that we, we should be able to produce in this country. Yeah. And so what the CBN did then was to ban it and then begin to do what we call direct interventions into some of these uh, uh, producers of those products in Nigeria. And now the CBN is saying, no, we are not going to be doing that any longer. Rather, we would rather be communal policy, which is definitely what they should be doing. So what, what that has uh, created is that um, it, it has not created a level playing field. That means that Nigerians also that want to import this product will be competing with Nigerians that are also producing this product in, 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 in Nigeria here. Yeah. It could be a challenge in terms of cost of production because we have already seen that already, that the cost of a, a bag of rice sometimes that comes outside the shop of this country is cheaper than what you have in this country. And sometimes the, the difference in terms of price is not, uh, between the local and the foreign, sometimes it's just maybe 500 or thereabout. So what will happen that we have competition, maybe we we'll see the local rice that are going in extinction or bringing down their prices. That is uh, definitely what we'll see. But we must not forget the genesis of the, the ban of this item. Like I said, it was to create a local production and uh, through CBN direct intervention. And also, again, uh, it, it was also to make sure that uh, we bring down the cost of those goods when we produce it locally, but that has not been achieved. And we must also know that these goods were banned at that time when we were under an FS crisis like this, because the CBN felt that they were the ones that were uh, sorting for FX more from those who that were importing some of these things like rice, uh, fish, and others. So they, they said those things will not have access to the official FX rate. And we saw that at that time that intervention was made, I mean, that decision was made, um, the, 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 the exchange rate moved from a low of, a low of about um, 250 then to a, I mean, to a high of about 500 before they came up with the import export window that attract investors into the market and then they, they re stabilized at 360. So definitely the, all we have been chasing all this while, we are just chasing shadows. The main issue that has to do with FX uh, 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 stability has to do with liquidity. Now the unbanding of the 40, 43 item will it add liquidity into the system. That's what we'll be waiting to see in the coming days. Well, well I was as a layman, I was just afraid because in a time when we're talking about the fact that the Naira is crashing so much and we're saying, okay, in order for us to, to strengthen the Naira, we have to look deliberately at uh, what we are going to do to be an exporter more than being an importer of products. And now this is happening. It just, like you said, uh, there will be competition 
between the local producers and the people who are importing these things. Sometimes it's cheaper to get it from outside the country and nothing is being done to make sure that the prices crash from here because the production will be done so much. Will that not be more disadvantage to our economy than an advantage? Well, it will be more disadvantage, especially when uh, the former CBN administration made us to feed that we have attained self-sufficiencies in rice production. So that I will soon be one of the largest exporters of rice out of this country. So let's see how that plan, and maybe now that we have a, 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 a competition, we'll begin to start exporting those rice and we'll bring the price over that could bring the cost of rice down. And the good thing about this policy is that it might, it might, if it works out well, bring down inflation. Because you must know that it's 41, 43 band item as item that Nigeria use daily. That is one thing we must know now. If you have access to the FX market in the short term, I think that will bring down cost of uh, of these goods and services, and that will in turn bring down inflation. Inflation. But my challenge is in the era when SCBM is struggling to meet legitimate in my terms of liquidity. Mm -hmm. Now you are saying the 43 band as an item can access FX market. Do you have the liquidity to meet those demand? That is my only fear. It will because what you are going to see now, you are going to see an up. So uh, an offshore in terms of um, um, as uh, those 43 buying items seeking effect into the uh, in the official market and that will create uh, a lot of um, demand and supply side. So if they are demanding and the demand is so high and the supply is not the is not able to meet supply, then price will definitely go up. And if they are demanding again and the CBA is not able to meet the supply, then they will still fall back to the parallel market. And the parallel market and speculators will now decide to enjoy it. But if CBN is able to meet demand, if CBN is able to uh, meet their demand and meet it on time, again, we must not forget that some of these SMEs and all these uh, um, importers prefer to use the parallel market because of the slimness nature in, and when we talk about slimness nature the fast means whereby they can assess these effects when they need it comparable to the cbn policy where they have to fill it from m then wait for their turn and that and that so if the cbn is able to make it slimless and then investors are not beginning to or importers are not going to the effect to the parallel market it will definitely drive down rates in the parallel market and maintain stability in the official market. And once you are able to maintain stability in the official market and then uh, drive down price in the parallel market, then you begin to attract foreign direct investors. That will build your liquidity. And with that, you could have a stable exchange. But it's neither here nor there. Everything is all depending on liquidity, liquidity, liquidity. Well, I, I don't know how... how even the advantages that you will try to outline will benefit the, the local producers. Uh, take, for instance, like rice, uh, when there is no correspondent, correspondent um, measure put in place to make sure it is easy for them to even produce this thing, uh, this rice, to compete with the ones that are, are being imported. So it's like digging a, a well to cover a hole. Uh, on the other side. So, which means inflation might come down, but the farmers might be impoverished so much so that there will still be hunger in the land. And it's only going to be the people who are able to buy the ones that are being imported that will enjoy. Because the farmers who use this as income as well may not even have that income anymore because the competition will be to their disadvantage. That's my fear. Uh, I don't know how it affects the global uh, investment market and all that, but I'm talking about the local farmers who will be cut off from enjoying this cake, as it were. So I don't know how the, the, the local producers are factored into this whole uh, issue. Well, if the local producers, um, I mean, uh, you doing what they ought to do, I, I don't think they will have too much challenge because, again, they were given some of these long single digit you know it was direct intervention from cbn but again unofficially you know that there's a lot of corruption in that process mm -hmm. a lot of politicians were having this money without even owning a farm so that again is a big challenge and so those that own the farm uh, what they have again is not enough to meet legitimate demands so it was a it was a policy that was politicized and also was endorsed with a lot of corruptions in it so i think uh, that is why it could be very tough for them. 
But ordinarily, it shouldn't have been because they were voting at a single SJ. It was a direct intervention. You mustn't forget that the former governor of CBN did the did the rice rice pyramid in Abuja, where the, the former president Mahmoud Bora and others they sat there and took pictures and saying that rice is coming like we had the Kano pyramid in Kano. After that, at the same, the rice all disappears. We've not seen those. We don't even know whether they shared it within themselves at that time. So uh, I think uh, uh, is it's a wait and see game. And the CBN is not saying that um, they will not um, want to help local production. They said they will come with policy that will help local production of those goods. Now, you see, in the developed economies or developing economies, what they do is that you make sure the tariff on these goods that are coming in are high. So it makes the local more attractive. So I don't know that we have to deal with the physical side because the, 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 the monetary side have done what they ought to do. So it's the physical side that, that edge that are the one that deal with tariff, with their high tariff on cement, so that it will still discourage them from importing it. Remember that we have been able to meet self-sufficient in terms of cement production. We have, uh, I mean, three of the biggest uh, cement factories in Africa and one of the most of the biggest in the world. Some of these cement factories, like Dangote cement, is even all around, uh, it's all over Africa. And uh, so it's there. So, I mean, we've been but the only challenge has been in the area of price. So this also will create a price war that is already in the cement in the cement industry, and that will also bring the, down the price of cement also, and also be able to damage the cost of building of houses may come low, and that will mean that we have more houses that will accommodate uh, 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 more Nigerians that are able to afford some of these government policies on housing that the government is planning to bring, and even private investors. That could happen, but like I keep saying, all these things are on paper. This is what we expect. But in reality, we need to push the FX market. We need liquidity. Once liquidity comes and they are able to meet this demand, can I assure you that we're beginning to see light at the end of the tunnel. But mustn't forget that the CBSA is a short-time measure to boost liquidity. So we may go back to a situation whereby uh, uh, the, the, once liquidity is in the system, then the locals will also begin to benefit from it also because their own price will be low comparable to what, what, what you've been bringing in. But especially if the government is able to raise tariff on those goods. For me, that is the only way you can see guide local production, whereby you raise tariff on imported uh, uh, goods. But like, you know, uh, we are, we, Nigerians, we are, we are, we are foreign, we like foreign goods comparable to our own, own goods. But when you talk about our local rice, I think most Nigerians are beginning to have to patronize the locals, especially the local rice because of the hygienic nature of it, the nutritious nature of it, and the, 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 the health uh, implication of it, which is better than what we have for it, uh, from the foreign rice. So, um, it's, it's, it will see in the coming days uh, what will come about. Like I always say, monetary policy, when you make your decision, the physical side will, will begin to look at how they can safeguard the locals, especially their own produce, producers of those goods, and also their own citizens from, from feeling the effects of what the monetary policy has just come up with. Okay, well, sometimes people just, um, our government just makes pronouncements without a step-by-step -step, uh, plan on how to achieve what they need to achieve. You're talking about liquidity that is so much needed uh, to achieve what they think uh, is needed in our country. Well, if you were to advise finally now, what are the steps that need to be taken for this to be achieved? Step by step, how do we I think go about it? Yes. I think first of all, I like the way the, the new CBA governor is addressing the issue. They have said they will still meet with stakeholders. Then uh, I think the first step, which I think they say they are discussing, the first step I think is to meet with stakeholders, which is say they are doing. The second step I think is to make sure that they clear the backlog of liquidity. It affects demand, especially from the aviation sector and from foreign portfolio investors, whether foreign portfolio investors or direct or direct foreign investors. And once they do this three things, then they will create stability. Once the stability comes in, then Nigerians in the diaspora, whether remitting effects into the, the into economy, will no more be remitting effects by third party. They would rather remit these effects directly through the banks and so that will also create liquidity in the system because there's no need you going to the parallel market when the banking rate and the parallel market are the same so it's safer you just patronize the bank so so if 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 they do that and then um i think this policy 
will definitely, uh, like I said, step step by step approach. First of all, make sure you make uh, you meet your meeting with the stakeholder. Which is when, when I mean stakeholders, I'm talking about the banks. I'm also talking about them meeting the bureau the changers, uh, bureau the change operators also, and also meeting those that are using the digital platform. They shouldn't just meet the bureau the change operators alone. They should meet those that have the apps that most Nigerian diaspora are using to 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 to, to, to transfer money to their relative here in Nigeria. That is one. Then secondly, again, like I said again, they must clean the backlog. We the CBN government said they are already working behind the scene to make sure those backlogs are cleared. And most of those backlogs are from the aviation sector and also from foreign direct investors. Once you do that, you begin to end the credit. And thirdly, that has nothing to do with CBN. That has to do with the physical side. Make sure you reduce oil theft and be able to meet your production quota to OPEC. Once that is done, that means you attract more liquidity into the system. And so that will liquidity in the system that legitimate demand uh, I mean legitimate demand is demands for importers to import goods that are necessary in Nigeria, demands for those that need to pay school fees, demand for those that will be traveling. Once you meet all those demands, naturally the rate will stabilize and will come down because you are able to meet all those legitimate uh, uh, demands. Well, I can only uh, wish the central bank uh, governor uh, good luck. And uh, if I were to meet him, I'll also ask him, December is coming. We were told that the new notes will be the ones in circulation. The old ones will be phased out. What is the plan? Uh, we're going to be operating with uh, different uh, kinds of notes because that is our country right now. Or what will happen to the old or the new notes? Um, it's, a, it's a common thing. We, see the, we, physical, are, we see the physical yeah, notes. We are less, we are, we we are less concerned about the new or the good note. All our Nigerians are concerned about is the way the Naira is being patterned in the FX market. Fix the Naira. And again, remember that the, the former acting government has said that the old and the new note will continue to be together even after December. And I don't think there's a change in that. Mm. What we are interested is not the notes that makes it. But the value of the money value itself. Is the, is the value of the property. Mm. And our value of since today is being is being battered, especially with FX. And remember the report that came on. We are the well, we are more among the worst performing currency. In the two Africa, worst performing are uh, uh, the Naira and the Angolan uh, Kwanza, or what do they call it? And, and, and unfortunately, again, when you look at those are the two uh, OPEC high OPEC nation in Africa. So mm. that tells you that it's mismanagement is one way or the other. Mm. All right, thank you so much, Mukhtar, for coming on the show this morning. Uh, this is how much we can take on this segment. Thank you for having me. You have a pleasant day. Yeah, you too. Uh, that was Mukhtar Mohammed, International Finance and Economics Analyst, uh, talking to us from Lagos State. Here we'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at why HPV vaccine matters in preventing cervical cancer. Stay with us. <laughs> 